Yeah. The one thing that I would want anyone who's listening to this to remember and understand is that real life can be the video game instead of the game being the game. And so if we take all the things that we love in gaming, leveling up, getting loot, uh, fighting, fighting bosses, fighting enemies, right? Having, beating creatures with friends, having amazing stories and experiences, uh, exploring amazing locations. We can do all of this in the real world. And so if we remember that, like, we can level up just like we can in a video game, then ultimately, like, that's where you'll see, like, the success that you want in your life and, like, have the happiness and um, life that you that you want and deserve. Here's the million dollar question. How do men like us reach our full potential, grow into the men we dream of being while taking care of our responsibilities, working, being good husbands, fathers, and still take care of ourselves? Well, that's the big question. In this podcast, we'll help you answer those questions and more. My name is Brent and welcome to the Fallible Man Podcast. Welcome to the Fallible Man Podcast, your home for all things man, husband, and father. Big shout out to Fallible Nation. You guys keep us on the air and a warm welcome to our first time listeners. Hey, thanks for giving us a chance. We hope you enjoy it. My name is Brent and today my guest is psychiatrist, Dr. Agam Dewan. Agam, welcome to the Fallible Man Podcast. Awesome. Thank you, Brent. Glad to be here. Now, we like to bring things in kind of light. So we have the random trivia question of the show. All right. So... So here you go. How fast can an ostrich run? Is it 15 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, or 40 miles per hour? Mm -hmm. I want to say 50. You want to say 50? That wasn't even 50. That's my answer. Your, uh, you your said answer 50, 50, right? No, I said 15, 25, oh, 30, 15. or 40. 15. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, then let's go 40. 40? Okay. Now, guys, you know the rules. Don't pause this. Don't look it up. Make your guess. Write it down. If you're driving, please don't write it down. Remember your answer. We'll get back to this at the end of the show. Now, Dr. Dewan, the first thing I ask is you to introduce yourself because I can read your accolades, right? I, I just said, hey, he's a psychiatrist. That doesn't mean anything to anybody. We know you're a psychiatrist, but in your own words, who is Agam Dewan? Yeah. So my name is Agam Dewan. So I, I am a psychiatrist, as Brent mentioned. And so I specialize specifically with men and gamers. So when I was a young man, I've struggled with my own uh, mental health issues, isolation, loneliness, depression, anxiety, um, feeling unwanted. And so having still working on that journey, but having overcome a lot of those challenges, I want to be able to be that um, older brother that I never had when I was younger. Okay. Now, if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Mm. Mind reading. Mind reading? Mind reading. I feel like it would really help, of course, with my job as well, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's my selfish motivation. But in terms of communication, right, like I think as, as guys, we, have, we really have to learn communication skills and just being able to uh, understand where the other person is coming from can really help us develop better relationships with them. Okay. That's like you don't spend enough time in people's heads already. <laughs> oh, you, you got to commit all the way, my friend. <laughs> Fair, enough. Fair enough. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? I could travel anywhere in the world, any time period, or just this any current place, time Any period. location currently. Any location. Okay. So I would go to uh, Japan. And the reason I would go there is because in, in, in Japanese culture, right, like, like anime is a big thing. So like, that's what I really enjoy. But also there are very disciplined uh, people. Like that's why a lot of their companies like Toyota and um other japanese companies i'm blanking on the reason they're so successful is because um they follow an order process and they repeat it over over time right and so i would love to go there and kind of learn how they do that so that way uh, i can become better as well i actually had a friend at one point who had a degree in 
uh, Japanese hydroponic engineering or something like that. I was huh. like, what even is that? He's like, nobody knows, but that's why I can charge money for it. Yeah. It's like, so, it's so specific. Right. I was like, not just, just general engineering. Like, I don't even understand that, but yeah, he, he was like, they're just so, I was like, yeah, but you got really specific in there. Now, I remember, go ahead. Go on. I was going to say, I remember hearing like similar to what you're saying. There was uh there's a big market or there was for like identifying whether a chicken is male or female, like, or a chick based on the cloaca, right? Like, so that way, you know, if it's like a chick or a, uh, I guess a rooster or a hen, right? And so there's a big market identifying that. And so Japanese researchers were really big into that. And they were able to get like, you know, like one a second or some ridiculous rate like that. But because of that, they were able to charge insanely high rates to the uh, the dairy companies who obviously did want to know which were chickens and which were uh, which were roosters and which were hens. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, you, you ready to step on some toes here? Sure, uh, let's do it. We're, we're going to set some people off. Best game ever and why? Oh, uh, in my opinion, the best game I have ever played is The Witcher 3. Okay. Why? There's one specific moment that I can define for you where I realize that like this game is something special. So imagine you're Geralt of Rivia. You're like exploring around this town. You're trying to find your uh, your adopted daughter. And then you, you come to this swamp. And so you're in this swamp, right? And these three like weird looking ladies come out. And like one of them has like a pail on her head. They all have like parts of dead bodies on them. Clearly they're witches, like some kind of uh, odd witch. But like they're... They don't look comical or goofy. They look freaking scary. And so you're watching this and you're talking to these witches trying to find out where these daughters are. Your daughters are, keep in mind, there's like missing kids all around the neighborhood. So you're like, okay, like I see body parts on you. So like, I wonder if like this is where the missing kids went. And then this music starts playing and it's like this most, it's like, it goes like, do, 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 And, and like the way it's done, it's like, not like synthesized, but it's like very like rough, like it's a rough sounding music. And like, I don't know the instruments or the technical aspects, but it sounds rough. And I remember feeling so scared for Geralt the Witcher in that moment. And like, so terrified of these villains. And I've never felt this way about any villains like in other series. And keep in mind, this is like hour six into the game, like way at the. So I'm like, okay, like this game is something special. Okay. And then like it just kept surprising me over and over and over again. No, you know I'm I'm gonna hate mail on that. <laughs> yeah, are you a gamer? Oh, I I I have taken a step back from gaming. Um, okay, but you were. I I was I actually. Uh, it was one of the reasons that when when we connected, I was so interested in talking to you because I lost three years of my life to World of Warcraft. Mm, yeah, full on addiction. I, I made the great mistake, or I don't know, good moment of typing slash played on all of my characters. Okay, and adding it up because it will in the chat you can type slash play. And I don't know if you played WoW, well, oh, but it'll tell well. you exactly how long you played that tune. Ooh. And yeah, I, I did the math and I lost three years of my life to that game. Dang, three years. Uh, yeah, so it's like, I, I mean, that was the end of that game for me. Uh, I've always been a Blizzard guy. I grew up on Diablo and the original Warcraft. Yeah. Uh, the new Diablo 4 though. Have not played it yet. I, I'm really <laughs> like, I, I took a break. Like I was, I, I played at an elite level in Diablo 3 for a long time. And uh -huh. I was like, okay. I need to take a break from that too. It's getting a little yeah. intrusive. I'm getting a little too into it now, spending more and more time playing. But yeah, I, I've definitely gone back and forth. I actually uh, play D and D with some guys right now. Mm. Once once a week, we get together and you know have yeah. a drink, like through part of a campaign and yeah, 
So gaming's always been a thing for me. It's just different variations and how into it I am. But yeah, right. Of course, you always see those guys like you know my brother loves Baldur's Gate. We yeah. played Diablo and World of Warcraft together, but he loves Baldur's. Gate, right. Mm -hmm. So everybody has that one game that's like this is the best game ever. Yeah, I used to know some of the top ranked players in the world in Halo. Oh really? It's like yeah. yeah every, everybody has those games that's like this is it. So. Someone's going to hate on us, but that's cool. I, I've never played the Witcher series. I've always wanted uh -huh. to, uh, just because I love the character. Yeah. But I do less console gaming and have done more computer gaming usually. More more PC, yeah. Yeah, no, it really is cool that everyone has their own specific thing. For me, it was Smash Bros. Like, it's something that we started playing in college and started going to different tournaments at, you know, started learning, okay, like, this is how you play competitively. And yeah, definitely similar, like lost, probably not lost, experienced, uh, probably years of my life to with Smash Bros. Yeah, I, I just hit a point where it's like, I'm not controlling the game as much as I'm, I'm sacrificing real life over in playing the game. Precisely. Was, I hadn't started. I, I wasn't even like raiding with anybody in particular like big i wouldn't join a raiding guild because i would not commit to two nights a week four hours at a time for raids i had yeah. same limitations with some of the top raiding guilds in the world and i would periodically go with them if i was on mm -hmm. but i wouldn't cross that line from elite casual to like diehard raider uh-huh my wife would have killed me and probably divorced me but yeah it uh definitely started becoming a problem when it was like oh, i'd rather do this than go actually like do life yeah so that that exactly. was a come to jesus moment so now i'm really particular about how much i get in front of a computer for gaming uh just because it's really easy to get carried away for me i started doing uh was mech mech wars when that went online and i had to jump back from that too because i started Super casual, and then all of a sudden, like playing all the time. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. nope. You know that point where you lose control, You're right? So. And and what we have to remember is that these platforms, there or these games, they're designed to keep us hooked, right? It's not like they just happens to us. Like they are structured in such a way with the the rewards given out in such a way that we get like our behavior gets reinforced. Right. And then it makes it easier and easier and easier to sink in. Now, guys, we're, we're spending a little time getting to know Agam and just what he's about. I'm really, I've been looking forward to this conversation. Like I really have just because this is a topic that's near and dear to me. We're not just going to talk about gaming edition guys. We're talking about men's mental health in general. Uh, games just seem to have a bigger appeal to male audiences than female audiences. And there are a lot of, I know several female gamers, but it, it seems to have more of an appeal for us. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about, uh, the loneliness that develops for a lot of guys when not just in that time period, but men and men in general seem to have a problem with loneliness. But before we jump down all that. We're going to roll to our first sponsor, and we will be right back with more from Agam. Now, before we go any further, I wanted to share with you guys, I don't always tell you how much I love doing my podcast. Like, I passionately love what I'm doing. And one of the things that makes my life better as a podcaster is to work with a company like Grow Your Show. Grow Your Show is a one-stop podcast do it all. Now... I use Grow Your Show for my marketing, but Grow Your Show is literally a one-stop shop. You can record your episode and just drop it off with them and they take it from there. It's amazing. If you are interested in picking up podcasting as a hobby, or maybe you're looking to expand your business and use podcasting in that aspect, talk to my friends over at Grow Your Show. Adam will take care of you, I guarantee it. I trust him, he's my friend, he's my business colleague, and I wouldn't trust anybody else with my show. Guys, welcome back. In the first part of the show, we're just getting to know a little bit who Agam is uh, now and the why behind him. In this part of the show, we're going to dive into men's mental health, gaming, social media, and just all the things that affect men 
some of the conversations that we don't like to have. And this may be a little uncomfortable for you. I promise it's a little uncomfortable for me because this is hitting real close to home on some of these, these subjects. But this is a conversation as men we need to be having. Men's mental health is a major concern and it's not something we talk about very often, very openly. And it's something we need to be able to have these conversations about. Now, Agam, tell us your story. How did you come to be so passionate about this subject? You talked about it a little bit in your introduction, but what brought you to this point where it's like, you know what? I'm going to change the world on this. I'm going to, I'm going to start helping other men. For sure. Yeah. So I have a very specific moment in high school and I remember coming home every day and grabbing a plate of Oreo cookies, taking it down to the basement, all the lights are off, closing the door and then just gaming. Like that was my routine in high school. And so, because I knew my dad didn't come home till around like six 30 and, uh, this like gave me a perfect like couple hours to, uh, to game. Right. But then I also had a PC in my room. And so would do the same thing, uh, later, later on, like into the night too. There was a girl that I wanted to ask to prom, but I was too scared. I was legitimately too scared to ask her out. And then I saw that a couple weeks or uh, a couple weeks later that some other guy had asked her out. So I still go to prom, right? I see this girl that I wanted to ask that I wanted to date go out or dancing with this other guy. And I just remember feeling like, fuck, like I just spent the last four years just gaming. Like I, I didn't develop any social skills. Like I, I didn't know how to talk to girls. I never kissed a girl like anything like that. And I just spent my time gaming. And so going into college, I was like, man, like this feels miserable. Like I need to change this. So go to college, start getting more social, join a fraternity, uh, become involved in like, like community service and like, like a whole different, like, like clubs and stuff on campus. And I was like, okay, like, this is awesome. Like, I, like I'm having a lot of fun doing this and I feel like I'm growing as well. But then I was able to scale back the gaming where I still did it, still enjoyed it, but it wasn't taking over, uh, my life. And then when I went to medical school and then trying to decide where I wanted to go, like I knew that I wanted to be a psychiatrist because like I'd worked through a lot of these mental issues in my head. And so can help other people make uh, the change their thought processes and behaviors too. And then when I was looking into more specifically, like what kind of psychiatrist do I want to be? Like what, what do I want to dedicate my mission, my life to? This is what resonated with me most strongly. Like this is what I feel a passion towards because I know that there's other young guys out there and just in a similar position, if not worse position uh, than me. I think it's only getting harder and harder for guys, especially as the social media age kind of takes over. And so I want to be able to help these young guys uh, avoid a lot of the pitfalls that I had and be kind of that older brother, that that even father figure, quote unquote, that um, that I never had. Okay. See, there's an origin story for every hero, right? And every and villain too. And every villain. So whether you call yourself either one, it's everybody's got that start point where it's like right. something click. Now, I'm curious, in your practice, uh, with your experience, why do you think more and more young men and even middle-aged men are starting to pursue uh, venues that let them disconnect from reality? Yeah, that's, that's a good question, right? So I think since the dawn of time, we've always wanted to disconnect from reality, whether it was like the wine that, that we would make or um, like, you know, the kind of herbal psychedelic stuff and native tribes to um, what, what is it called in the rural communities that you make? Uh, moonshine, like making moonshine, right? Like there's there's always like, we've always wanted to do that because they're instant dopamine hits and dopamine hits give us pleasure. And so now what's happening with gaming and stuff is that it's so 
easy to fall into them, right? With when you get into alcohol, of course, you know it's bad for you. We know that like our body feels like crap when we engage in it, right? And they're st still stimulating our dopamine system, the reward pathway, and all that. Gaming, social media, it does the same stuff. Right, like it's there. It gives us quick dopamine hits, and then because we have quick dopamine hits, it reinforces that behavior to want us to keep seeking it out, and so that's why it's even easier and easier and easier to fall into. And so add that, add in that. Other people don't perceive it as a bad thing, like video games or porn or whatever, social media compared to like drugs, right? Like there's no comparison in its perception, so that makes it a lot easier too. And then plus. Any kind of struggles that guys are having, right? It's a lot easier to, to uh, engage with and to forget about them entirely and engage in the video game world rather than addressing them in the real world. Okay, I'm I'm curious why gaming, right? Through all those manifestations, and, and we have always disconnected to some extent. But you know, you and I touched on it earlier, right? There was. Mm -hmm. uh, early console games i'm old enough to remember the original atari of course i actually had one i had a commodore 64 it was one of the only game systems we ever really had in the house but then you had the birth of like you know D, &D becoming recognized then you had like hard games like magic the gathering right as consoles continue to develop so you had multiple facets of gaming why is it that gaming seems to appeal more to men yeah, that's that's a really good question. The the way I conceptualize it in my head is that combat sports, sports, competition, that always has been more of a masculine drive because that's because as men we desire to prove ourselves. Right? And so back in like the old days the combat sports right like gladiator fights like those were men um any kind of fighting issues like like they were men too and so there's like an i think there's a greater innate drive for us to uh prove ourselves and compete um because that lets us get noticed and so we're more likely to reproduce right and then have children and so that's literally fulfilling our biggest biological drive the reason for living and so now it's like you can take that uh that drive that we have and channel it into gaming where we're trying to feed, be, defeat monsters and other people right competition with other people competition with the game and then it's just we can kind of fulfill that drive without doing it in the real world because it's so easy to do it and there's no consequences for doing it either okay we were talking during the break and, and i mentioned that i uh I've made a post on time and I had a guy just totally go nuts on me because I suggested that a lot of men should, if not completely step away from gaming, at least, you know, really minimize their gaming activities because mm -hmm. more and more men are using it to succeed in a non-existent reality, right? Instead of uh, putting in that time. That, that was one of the problems that happened when I started getting addicted to gaming. And I mean, I even observed, I, I watched a friend lose his business to World of Warcraft long before right. I had or realized I had a problem, right? And I was like, I'm not going to be that guy. But this dude like unloaded on me for suggesting that gaming had the possibility of negative aspects. Why do you think it's a polarizing topic for some people that gaming could be problematic? Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good question too. So it's... In behavior change, right? There's a there's like a series of steps for um, changing behavior. It's like like you know if there's like a grief process. There's also a behavior change process, and the first stage of that is called pre contemplation, meaning that like it's the stage where you don't even recognize that you have a problem, and so the reason it's it's polarizing is because just like imagine going to an alcoholic who doesn't realize they have a problem, and telling them that uh you know this alcohol is bad for you right they'll fight you they'll curse you or like the guy who's smoking or like uh, the heroin addict or whatever it is right and we've all seen examples like this um 
plus so that that that's one aspect right like because it's so entrenched in our system and then the other thing that makes it polarizing is that there's a lot of emotionality attached to it right when we game we feel emotions we feel powerful we feel amazing right like I'm, i might have a crappy real life but in this video game i'm a level 70 paladin and i'm crushing enemies and i'm going on raids and uh you know i have friends in this game of course so it's like gaming does so much for us like it makes us like feel so good too when in in our real world uh <clears throat> we we feel crappy and it's it's really funny because like even i have felt um this polarization for example when people talk about violence in video games it makes me go like no or like violence causing or, or video games causing violence it makes me go no that's not true like look how many people play games like i can play gta the whole night and it doesn't make me want to hurt people right so even i feel this and i'm able to kind of temper myself right so if i feel this because i have such a love and attachment for gaming imagine the average person who doesn't have that level of psychological insight yeah. now i, I want to go a little deeper here uh since, since i have an expert here to ask right the research on men feeling more and more lonely at this point in history is is really disturbing Mm -hmm. uh, even men who are in quote unquote healthy relationships, the research showing how many men actually like, you know, men you wouldn't think are lonely because they're in a relationship and they have a good job or whatever, right? The amount of men who feel lonely, even in a group, even in a relationship, the amount of men dealing with depression and anxiety, suicidal thoughts and other mental health concerns, it, it's just flourishing. Like it is just, the, the numbers are terrifying. Mm -hmm. Can you share any insights into why we seem to be moving in this negative direction? So I think I think I think it speaks to a lot what we're saying before, right? Like with social media, with video gaming, all of that, the access is so so simple. The barrier to entry is so incredibly simple. As, as human beings, we're designed to be social creatures connected in our communities, right? Like that's how we evolutionarily survive by, by working together. And so the way our bodies evolved, they, have, they evolved to promote these processes, right? Because all this favors reproduction. It's the reason why sex feels good and may, we want to do it is because it feels good, because it promotes that reproduction. Same thing with social, socializing. And so... Now we're getting to everything where it's so super online, you know, like we, everyone connects online, uh, all the time is spent gaming too, right? All, every connection is online. It's so easy to escape from the real world when like all these like online kind of stuff, um, exists too. Right. But then our bodies aren't used to this kind of online behavior. We're cutting out the, the social aspect of things. Uh, we're also flooding our dopamine system as well. Oh, that's, that's another big reason is because dopamine is our reward and motivation neurotransmitter in our brain, right? Like that's what makes us want to do things like eating healthy and like working hard, that, that sort of thing. But imagine like those tasks, like they're at a level like here, but when you take a drug like alcohol or weed or anything like our dopamine spikes here, like the pleasure we get. Same thing with like gaming and stuff too, right? So imagine if our dopamine is here, like baseline is here. And like me working out gets me this level, but playing games gets me this level. So it's like, why would I want to do this when I could do this, like through the easy activities, right? Mm -hmm. But then the problem is when we do the easy activities, dopamine is our chemical for motivation. And so when we do stuff like video gaming, like I could game all day and then feel tired, even though I didn't, I did jack shit that day. And it's like, why, why is that? It's because we've trained our dopamine motivation system to now we don't feel motivated. We don't have no energy. And these are signs of depression, right? So for a day, it's fine. But I imagine competing this pattern for months and months and years, then our diets start falling off. We start getting more isolated. So now we're more isolated. We're more anxious because we don't know how to interact, right? And so, like everything, kind of is a uh, is a spiral going down. With all of this available at our fingertips, 
right? Yeah. I mean, the, the scroll is unending. Uh, these little devices are both a blessing and a curse, right? Your mm -hmm. cell phones, the power of the world are your hands. You can game, you can scroll through social media, you can quote unquote, I'm using air quotes, guys, for connecting with people. Yeah, what it's incredible. Is the biggest problem facing young men today? I think it's loneliness, loneliness and isolation, especially when we come to young men. And the, the reason is because right, as young men, we are filled with testosterone. And we're in puberty, we want to reproduce, we want to be liked by the opposite sex, you know, we want to feel strong, we want to feel powerful. But we can't channel that because it's getting harder and harder to uh, date. You know, I think that as this especially speaks to young men is that as as social media is taking over, right, everyone's going online. And so women are rewarded for going online, right? Because they have photos and like they get likes on those photos, they get comments, they might have hundreds of messages, Tinder, hundreds of messages, Instagram messages, right? And so it makes it like they have all the options. And so because they have all the options, right, they want to choose um, the best ones that they can. Whereas like imagine like 300 years ago, you had 10, 10 guys, 10 girls in the same high school. And so they would all pair up because like that's what you had to do. But now in the, in the high school or like early college, right, we might have the same 10 guys and 10 girls, but all those 10 girls, right, they might just want that one guy because now they're getting attention from all of them, right? Or they might that one, one guy, but now they have access to the world. So you get attention from all these guys everywhere. And so it's like, if you have that level of connection with someone, imagine like Leonardo DiCaprio DMing your girl, like, I'm sorry, you got no chance, dog. Right. And so what that does is that all the rest of the men kind of get left in the dust. And so then, you know, they feel lonely, it becomes harder and harder, right? Like people they want to connect with don't want to connect back with them. And so what do they do? Go back to gaming and like, because that's where they feel powerful, that's where they feel motivated again, go to pornography, right, which feels good in the immediate, but then of course, makes it harder to um, develop a relationship in real life, right? Because there's no motivation to do that when you can just go to porn. So I think all these things really feed into male loneliness, like one of the problems today, and like social media is like the gateway and gaming is one of the gateways to that. Okay. I, I think there's a big difference in the value system. You were talking about, you know, women can get, get all these attention on social media. Men are inherently valued by what they provide, by what they can Agreed. Provide. Right. And women are primarily valued by their appearance. Correct. And, and that may be barbaric to somebody listening. I'm sure I'm pissing somebody off there, but it is true, right? We, we can argue semantics all day and say, well, that's misogyny. No, it's not. It's just true. Uh, that's always been. That's how reality has been, right? Yeah. Women have always been prized for the way they look. Men have always mm -hmm. been prized by what they can provide, right? Right. In, to, in the olden days, if I couldn't hunt like and bring back kill for my family, like I wasn't reproducing. No one would want to reproduce with me because I'm like that. I, I either A, be dead or B, like I'm the weak guy, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's, it's the same thing. And then women, we want, like back in the old days, right? You wanted the women who was young and fertile because that gives you the best chance of having uh, the most successful offspring. So guys, we're, we're, we're treading in some deep areas here. And like I said, if you're feeling uncomfortable, please don't leave. This is an important conversation. We need to be having men's mental health is very important. You are very important. And you're not going through this world alone, even if you feel like it. So please stay in this conversation. We've been talking about mental health. We've been talking about gaming, loneliness, social media, the way that impacts us, the way that impacts the way we look at life. In the next part of the show, we're going to dive into leveling up in real life as a man with our guest today. It's going to be good, guys. It's important. Please stay for this part of the show. This is the part you really need. If you haven't tuned in, really like dialed in, this next part of the show is really where you need to dial in, guys. This is the important stuff. We will be right back with more from Agam and yeah, roll our sponsor, all that good stuff. How well do you sleep at night? Do you toss and turn and wake up more tired than when you went to bed? Sleep is commonly one of the critical elements people fall short on in their life. The quality of sleep you get directly affects your ability to control your weight, your ability to add muscle, your stress levels, and your everyday job and life performance. If you're ready to move to the next level, then sleep 
has to be part of the plan. Check out our friends at ghostbed.com if you're ready to get your best sleep. I love my ghost bed. I've been sleeping on one for a couple of years and has made a huge difference in how I sleep. Hit ghostbed.com and use the code thefallibleman30 to get 30% off your order and start getting better night's sleep tomorrow. Now, let's go on to the show. Guys, welcome back. In the last part of the show, we were discussing men's mental health, gaming, loneliness, social media, just the impacts of modern society on men's mental health. In this part of the show, we're going to dive into the application part. And this is where you guys really, I'm begging you, please tune in for this. Okay. We're going to talk about leveling up in real life as men. We've got Dr. Agam Dewan on here, and he's a psychiatrist. And this is what he specializes in is helping young men and men go from dwelling a little too much in the virtual realms of gaming and, and things like that to really turning their life forward in the physical world as well. He is a dedicated gamer and loves that. So he knows exactly where you are guys. And let me say, we're not condemning gaming. Okay. But like anything, if it starts to control you or interfere with you living your real life and living the life you want to live, it can become a problem. Just like drinking, just like drugs, anything like that. We're not saying it's bad. It's saying, does it have a hold on you or are you just doing it for fun? Now, why did I, I saw a question when I was prepping for the show that you, you said you're always ready to talk about. And I, I had to ask, right? Because it's like this this is the question I want to know. What does everybody uh -huh. get wrong about men's mental health? Yeah. So what everyone gets wrong about men's mental health is that we don't just want men don't just want to talk out our feelings. Because the conventional advice that's always just given to guys is, oh, just go to therapy. Oh, just go to therapy. Oh, just talk about it. And it's like, there's a reason that men haven't sought out that kind of healing is because it's not really in their forte, right? When we imagine, like, imagine a group of women hanging out, what, just hypothetically, what are they doing? Chatting. Chatting, gossiping, right? Just, it, it is what it is. Imagine a group of guys hanging out. What, what are they doing? They're fishing, they're playing games, they're like playing football, they're hunting, they're like, they're doing shit, right? And it's not to knock either or, it's just that it's a different way that we like process things, we process emotions, um, different things that drive us, right? And so similarly, like things like just like therapy and, and talking, like it's just, it's like step one and that's like men want to do things that are more like action based. And like, that's how they're able to kind of solve their problems. Right. And I think that's what people get wrong is that giving that same kind of almost like feminized advice to men is different than giving it to uh, women to help kind of solve whatever their mental health issue is happening. Okay. I actually saw a, a, a post on Instagram the other day and there was a bunch of men standing holding a beer around a barbecue grill and i said what's amazing is this many men who have never met each other before can stand around this barbecue grill for an hour and a half at a neighborhood barbecue and they still will not know the other person's name before they leave and yeah I laugh. <laughs> Accurate. Like, uh guilty i've definitely been definitely been there uh-huh it's just not, yeah. It's, it's not our go-to move for sure, right? Sitting around, right? But then you still might invite the other guy for barbecue next week at his place, mm -hmm. right? Like you might still do that, and you still connect it. It's just a different way, right? And but the conversation will stay superficial for a long time. We're not gonna become best buds. We're not gonna necessarily start talking about our feelings or anything like that. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about dad stuff or marriage stuff. We're going to talk about barbecuing and the best way to barbecue. Cause I know guys who can talk about that for hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that's where men and women run into that, uh, that communication dynamic is that like women like to talk about feelings and people men want to talk about things and facts. So like, that's where like hard communication line, uh, really can break down. Okay. So, 
here here's one of the questions that I know I, I can hear being asked in my head, right? Is is where do we start, right? Because anything we do as a coping mechanism, whether that's gaming or drinking, it's exactly that. It's a coping mechanism. How do we isolate the problems or the feelings or what's bothering us that we're jumping into gaming to get away from without necessarily going and uh, spending, you know, weeks or months or years in therapy because a lot of us aren't going to do it. Mm -hmm. So for our listeners, you know, how do we start down that line? Because there's something we're avoiding, right? I mean, it's a coping mechanism, basically. And I may be seeing that. So how do we start to get to the root of that? Yeah, for sure. Right. And so this is the reason why like therapy is recommended for people is that it helps another person gain insight into you and your behavior. And then so that way, when they call it out, then you have that insight into yourself, right? But you don't necessarily need a therapist always to do that. Just like you can have a personal trainer to help you train, but you don't need a personal trainer to get jacked in the gym. So the first step is always is, is mindfulness, and which is a skill, right? Like keep in mind, it's a skill that you can level up just like we level up our stats in dexterity and uh, uh, attack strength and defense strength in a game, right? Mindfulness is a skill that we can level up in real life. And what that means is being aware of our own thoughts, being aware of how our thoughts like shape our feelings and be aware of how our feelings shape our actions. And of course, how our actions shape into thoughts. A classic example is Let's say you and we and your girlfriend get in an argument and then you go game and then you're mad and so you go game, right? But then like that cycle can repeat where like getting an argument, you're not fixing the problem, so you go game. But then because we were gaming, then we start having negative thoughts again about our partner because we didn't really address all the issues, right? And then that makes us feel crappy. And so because we feel crappy, we game and then the, the whole cycle repeats. Right. And so the first step is really having mindfulness, realizing, okay, I'm in this cycle. Oh, I realize that this is my coping mechanism. Oh, I'm realizing that me thinking these negative thoughts about my partner is getting me upset. Oh, when I feel upset, this is the action I take is a, is a game. Right. And so th- when you realize the problem, that's when you can start formulating the solution to get out of that problem. And I think this is where men can really excel is because we're so problem based and fact based. Once we isolate the problem, we can devise a logical solution, to get out of it. Okay. Because I know, personally, like, that's, I, I don't like to ask for help. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I think I'm, I'm pretty, uh, a pretty universal representation of most men in that fact that's like, that's the last thing I want to do. Yeah. It's like my problem. I got my own problems. You, I'll handle them because I'm not going to go asking for help. And guys, there's absolutely, absolutely a time to seek professional help. Okay. If you are really struggling, please get the help you need. Your mental health is so important. How do we start moving if we're struggling with feeling alone, even if we're surrounded with people, we're struggling with feeling alone. How do we start to level out of that some people it it might be just their comfort zone some people might be you know introverted they're just they don't like people how do we start to level out because that's a real problem these days Mm -hmm. yeah no absolutely is is a real problem so speaking on the the guide thing you had mentioned before right think about luke skywalker did he do it by did he save the galaxy by himself no he he had obi-wan kenobi right think about more contemporary like Harry Potter, did he defeat the Dark Lord by himself? No, right? Like he had Dumbledore helping him. And so like every strong person in like the history of any like story ever has had a guide, a mentor, a helper helping them in their own hero's journey. And so now you think about trying to level up in your own life, right? The The best analogy I found that really helps and works with a lot of people is recognizing that you are the main character in your own game, right? Like you're the main character. 
nobody's coming to save save us. Like, no, unfortunately, like, you know, you're starting out, this is the beginning of your game, and nobody's coming to save us. But you got to beat this boss, right? You got to beat the, the final boss or like all these bosses. One in the real life, that boss might be loneliness. So what do we do? We start leveling up, right? Like we're, we go train, we fight these monsters, we uh, get better gear. We like, yeah, exactly. You train, fight monsters, etc. You do that to level up, right? In the game, so that way you get strong enough to you do quests to fight the boss. So same thing in if you're trying to beat, let's say, loneliness, right? Well. We can level up our social skill stats. We can study social skills. We can study, we can read how to win friends and influence people to learn that. Okay, we're studying the skills, but then we can also go on quests to get XP. The quest being, oh, I might go to the bar on Friday night and just sit down, or I might go to this like uh, meetup that, that, that this, this that's happening, right? Oh, I might go to the social gathering that I skipped every time. And so when you start doing that, you're getting XP. We're showing ourselves that you can do it. And then eventually, as you keep leveling up in real life, then, you know, that's how you get out of this situation that you're in. Okay. I love that you're using gamification just because we, we know it works, right? That's, uh, that's the whole basis of like social media. It's gamifying, right? Getting those likes, mm -hmm. getting those clicks. That's one of the reasons we all keep going back to that nonsense and playing with that. It's like, can I get that? Right, they've they've learned to gamify our attention. Absolutely, uh, I love that you're gamifying leveling up as a person. Right, yeah, we're we're big believers in incremental improvement here at the Fallible Man. Right, mm -hmm. little little steps every day. You know, one step, one little step today to be better at something in some part of your life tomorrow. Right, little mm -hmm. pieces. This real change takes time. Uh, there's no ta-da moment where all of a sudden we're a better person or a new person. It, it takes, it takes building those skills or leveling up in different categories in our life. So how can we gamify this journey more in the real world? Right? Because for some of us, it's just hard. I'm not a very social person. So going, I told you earlier, I've, I've been doing some D playing D and D with some friends of mine. Right. That was a huge step for me mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm a very, I'm a loud personality on the mic. I'm a very introverted person. I'm a homebody. Sure. There is nothing I would rather do than curl up on the couch with my daughters and watch a movie and go nowhere. Right. Uh -huh. sure. I don't want to hang out with other people. So that was yeah. actually a, a step for me to go start spending time with other guys. Cause I don't have a close circle of guys around me all the time. Uh, and, and it was a step like my wife kind of had to do a little prodding there. So how do we start? making these transformations one piece at a time for guys who it's like, they feel like this is such a scary concept, even to step mm -hmm. out of that virtual world and into the real world. How do we start making that happen? Yeah. So I think the first thing is that you have to, when you go somewhere, right, you have to have one knowing where we want to go. And second, knowing why we want to go there right? Like whenever you travel somewhere. So similarly, whatever goal that you're setting, well, first you got to know what that goal is. So in your case, it was okay. I want to be a little bit more social. I want to start spending more time with guy friends. So you had, you had identified that as a goal. And now then the second part is, okay, why, why is that your goal? Like why, why this goal, right? Because we need emotion to fuel our actions. That's the whole reason emotions exist is to fuel behavior. And so well, like, why is that? Why is spending more time like a, a goal for you, right? And so you probably realize, like, okay, I'm not feeling a hundred percent, or you know, I feel like there's a part of my life missing, or I really miss these times that I had with my with my boys, right? Whatever it is, now there's your why, and now you're having a why to, you're having a reason to pursue what you're pursuing, right? And so that's those are the one and two things that I stressed with with anybody, like whatever. Um, you, you're trying to get out of your situation is knowing, of course, where you want to go. Second, having a strong conviction or even like whatever your reason is and why you want to go. And then uh, thirdly, yeah, I think this is one of the most important ones that people, most people neglect 
is that reflecting on the pain of your current situation, right? If your situation is good, then the, you're not going to want to leave it. But clearly there's something that's not right, something that's eating at us, something that's um, not suiting us to make us want to go in that situation, to make us want to leave, right? So in your case, you could reflect on that pain of, hey, I'm missing my friends here, like, and then use that pain to feel you. For the guy who's, for me, it was like, I hate this pain of not having the the girl that I wanted to go and prom with, but I seeing this other guy go, right? And then feeling that pain kind of gives you a lot of that drive and motivation to uh, keep moving forward. Okay. What is next for Dr. Agan Dewan? What's on the what's on the punch list? You got anything big coming? Are we doing books yet? Or are we? I, every every great psychiatrist ends up writing at least one book. I'm pretty sure. So is that in the future or you, what, what's next for you? Yeah, for sure. So that's, that's a really good question. So what I really want to do is all these things that we talked about, right? Like these concepts, these ideas, if we can distill them to their essence and then codify the process, like write a book, write a, create a program, just like, just like working out, for example, like there's a process from getting uh, like losing weight, right? There's a certain process or certain exercises, diets, sleeping regimens. Like once the process is codified, you can follow that process to lose the weight. So similarly, my goal is to create what we call like the level 100 system. But it's like a system for young men to be able to level up essentially. And like they just follow the process and like level up in certain areas. And so by working one-on-one -on -one with patients, what it helps me do is really develop out uh, the process, see what works, see what doesn't, and then eventually be able to codify it and then spread it to young men um, around the world. Okay. Now, is your website the best place to find you? Where is the best place to find you? Yeah, absolutely. The, what my website's the best place to connect with me. You know, if you feel like you really resonated with uh, what we talked about here, uh, feel free to book and, and you feel like you're struggling with some of the issues that I treat, then uh, yeah, feel free to book a consult call. We can do it right on my website. And you can also just send me a message in my contact form directly uh, to reach out to me and we can have a conversation and then see, uh, you know, what kind of needs you have and what we can do to help. Now, guys, of course, I will have all of Agam's connections down in the show notes or in the description, whatever platform you're watching on this are listening. If you're listening to the audio show, all of those connection points are there. Uh, if you're actually watching the video, then you can see on screen what his website looks like. And we'll have the address. I'm not going to. What is it? Okay. Well, we'll see. Okay. How 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 good is your audio game? It's www.agamdwanmd.com. So, so you know, it's, it's there. Just go to the link. It will be easier. Uh, you also have a great Twitter going, right? I was looking at your Twitter earlier. And so you guys are on that platform. You can go get more insights from him there. He is bringing the world of brilliant psychiatry and helping young men to Twitter or not. Sorry, Twitter. Ooh. TikTok. TikTok. My bad. TikTok. Yeah. Classic error. I hate No worries. <laughs> <laughs> I have a TikTok account because my business colleague was like, dude, you need to be on TikTok. I was like, All right. not another platform. I can't do it. Unnecessary anything. evil. I can't do one more. Yeah, uh, that, and I'm, I'm not really good with the short form content, like re editing my videos that way. But guys, mm -hmm. he actually has a phenomenal TikTok. I did go over, check it out. I just said it wrong. Uh, so check that out if you're on TikTok. He's got some good stuff going on over there, and we'll have all that information for you. Now, we know why you're still here. And the answer is an ostrich can, in fact, run 40 miles an hour. You were right. <laughs> Congratulations. And if you guys got it right, now you know. Let's go. Nobody actually cares. But. I'm impressed because, you know, it's like one in 10 guests actually get that question right. I just randomly search out questions on the internet. And if I can't find a good one there, I get into my box of trivial pursuit and start looking for random mm -hmm. questions there because it's the king of random trivia. Now, Agam, we've talked about a lot of things and I've tried to be light on some of the subjects because it is a really hard subject when it comes to men's mental health. A lot of men are really uncomfortable with even talking about it. I don't believe it's talked about enough, but the way I want to end the show is 
what do you want the men listening to hear? If they hear nothing else from this entire episode, what is the one thing you want all of our listeners to hear today? Yeah. The one thing that I would want anyone who's listening to this to remember and understand is that real life can be the video game instead of the game being the game. And so if we take all the things that we love in gaming, leveling up, getting loot, uh, fighting, fighting bosses, fighting enemies, right? Having, beating creatures with friends, having amazing stories and experiences, uh, exploring amazing locations. We can do all of this in the real world. And so if we remember that, like, we can level up just like we can in a video game, then ultimately, like, that's where you'll see, like, the success that you want in your life and, like, have the happiness and um, life that you that you want and deserve. Guys, be better tomorrow because what you do today, and we'll see you on the next one. This has been the Fallible Man Podcast. Your home for everything man, husband, and father. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a show. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com for more content and get your own Fallible Man gear.